Hi, I'm Christina. I'm with Paul Equip. Thank you for having me be a part of this today. I'm really excited to um, just get to hear from everybody and be a part of this uh, pitch fest. It's really just an amazing experience. Paul Equip is really just an answer to a personal problem that I had, which was when I was out running, my waist belts and armbands were just super annoying and very frustrating way to carry my phone with me. And I was on a long run in 2017 when I was fumbling with the latest waist belt that I was trying to work with. And I had this epiphany. I wear a sports bra every time I'm running or pretty much every workout I'm on. And let's be honest, like all throughout the day. And there is kind of this amazing little space between your shoulder blades that's about the size of a phone. And could I create a pocket that would keep my phone with me, but keep it out of the way so I could focus on whatever workout um, I was on. So I got home from that run and got to work. I bought a sewing machine and turned to YouTube uh, to try to figure out how to sew. And I got inspired by the cloth diapers that I was using for my kids. Um, modern day cloth diapers aren't like what they were when we were kids. They're breathable, they're lightweight, they're moisture wicking, but they're also you know trying to keep moisture in. And so instead of using them as uh, intended, I reversed it to keep moisture out because I knew the um, keeping your sweat off of your phone, especially in sort of like a sweat zone would be really critical. Uh, so after, you know, all those things of figuring out how to actually make it, um, it worked. It was the answer I was looking for. My phone was out of the way, but I could have it if I needed it. Um, it wasn't bouncing. It wasn't slipping. It was just there um, giving me security, but not annoying me as I had been in the past. Uh, so within three months, I had idea. I went from my idea to, to launching an Etsy site. Um, I launched on Etsy because I was hand making them. For the first few months, I hand sewed every single quality clip that was sent out. Um, but as um, it caught on as running networks, my um, personal network of running friends and online networks that I was a part of um, in the running, women's running community, I uh, learned about it. It quickly, I outgrew my time of being able to sew and we outgrew my skill level. Um, my skills were not as a seamstress. So I, um, right before the holidays of 2017, started looking to find a uh, manufacturer. I found a small batch manufacturer in Maine that I ordered my first bulk of 250 uh, and moved off of Etsy and into my own uh, website, qualiflip.com. Now we're almost celebrating three years later of that, you know, professionalizing, going to manufacture and um, our own website. And we have tens of thousands of women across the world that use Quality Clip. Uh, we are manufactured in LA right now, and we have two models of Quality Clip: original and Lux. Ring, ring. Ooh, sorry. Excuse me. Sorry, I can't talk right now. I'll call you back. Sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> um, Qualcomm's name comes from my reason behind wanting to carry my phone with me when I was running. Uh, after my kids were born, it just became a necessity for me to be available uh, when I was out on the roads or tra trails. I was not the type of mom who wanted to be pushing a stroller. I wanted my alone time, but I wanted to be available um, if something was needed from whoever was caring for my kids at the time that um, I was away. So as I was like thinking through that story, I just, you know, the marsupial koala who carry their babies in their back came to me and it just felt kind of like a perfect melding of my story behind personally needing to carry my phone with me and a cute little creature because who doesn't love koalas? <laughs> my background is not in manufacturing or business. Um, my background is actually political organizing. And I think that the greediness and scrappiness that you learn from working with candidates and asking voters for money or votes has really aided in my ability to keep our team small. It's only me and um, I have three part-time people who help me with packaging and our customer service. Um, and I've also been able to kind of figure out where to invest financially that was needed and where I could sort of use that scrappiness that I've learned from um, politics and I, uh, figure out my own way of doing things. One instance is I knew that getting PR, um, getting in magazines was really critical to having the validation of this new weird idea that I was putting out into the world. And um, once I started talking to PR firms, I realized that was not um, a financial thing I wanted to invest in right now. But instead of throwing up my hands and uh, saying like, okay, not yet, I'll get to that at some point, I just went out and bought about a dozen health-related magazines for women. I opened up my runner's world and I looked up the editors 
and writers who were writing reviews of products in those, um, those magazines. And I went to LinkedIn and I sent them direct messages. I probably got 50% response rate from those people willing to take samples. And that led to articles in Runner's World, Huffington Post, People, Shape, um, and uh, several other publications. Uh, and it's not just my commitment to sort of like doing what it takes to help uh, the Nate word of Qualiclip get around. Our customers love Qualiclip. Uh, once they've tried it, they are committed to sharing with their network, sharing with their social media, um, and also sharing with the press. There was a story last fall that one of like, the big shoe companies was paying Runner's World to put together, and it was called um, What Running Products Have Changed Your Life. And Runner's World went to Twitter, asked their you know, Twitter followers, uh, what products and my customers showed up, shared about it, they were interviewed, and we got into the print edition of Runner's World without having to spend a time doing it. Um, no one tells a story better than Title IX, and I'm so excited for this potential partnership. From our inception to launch, we've always been about the women that we're trying to just make it a little bit easier to get out the door and a little bit simpler. Whether they're heading out for a cycling ride or a run, um, hike, bah, the hiking or um, horseback riding or just taking their kids to the park. Qualco keeps their goods that they need um, secure but out of the way so they can focus on the world around them. We're now in a place that we could really take on a partnership like Title IX. We have the manufacturing capacity as well as the committed ambassadors and a high customer return rate uh, to help our partnership really take off. Our tagline is we've got your back and that isn't just about where you carry your Koala clip. We are true partners with our customers. We support, we give back, and we cheer everyone on. And we bring that same commitment and dedication to Title IX. Thank you. <laughs> and sorry if you hear this like paper, I, we're having our office painted and I just realized I'm like standing on the paper that uh, the painter put down and hasn't finished yet. <laughs> we, didn't even, we didn't even notice, but you got okay. our yeah, truck backing up for 20 minutes over here. So you're all good. <laughs> that was great, Christina, great job. I'm sure we have some questions from our judges. Uh, hi, Christina. Hi. I'm very intrigued by your product, but essentially you are a two-SKU business. A two Wait, I'm sorry. I didn't hear you. You are a two-SKU business. You have two products, right? The original. Uh, right now, yep. So where do you go from here? It seems like you believe you can build an entire business off those two SKUs, and then have you had thoughts about expansion or where you might go from here? Is there a reason you yeah. would also um, offer yeah. a waist belt? Go, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I am, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's a good question because um, we are looking into other products. Uh, we've been working on developing a waist belt, like a waistband specific version of this. Quality Clip right now does work on your waistband, um, but we are working on creating a horizontal version of it. Um, but we have to change the, the magnetic clip. The current one we use doesn't work just like turning it around and um, with the pandemic, uh, the clip has been sort of like an issue because it's coming from overseas. While we are manufactured in LA, no US manufacturer will create the clip that we use. And um, so we've sort of had like supply chain issues going back to like Janu January when stuff hit Asia. Um, and so we're working on developing a horizontal clip. We're also working on developing a um, new way of carrying um, like a hydration pack. And um, so I think our eventual goal is that we're going to be like a women built accessories um, for an act, for active women. Um, we're looking at not just solving a problem as like what has currently like what has been done, but it's like, what is the purpose of it? And why are you doing it? And um, so we are just starting to work on putting together a hydration um, vest as well. It's actually a hydration bra, but. Nice job. Um, I have a question about how you plan to grow if sort of social media or your customers right now seem like the majority of the way you're getting the word out. I love yeah. your scrappiness around that. That story was such a great story about scrappiness. It's like, yeah. oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to ping them on LinkedIn and I'm just going to keep pinging them until they yeah. get back to you. It's really, really good. 
Um, I mean, I think our, we have decided to invest in our customer right now because we knew as a new idea, we needed to have um, the women behind us to really see if this idea could take off. And so my personal network really is what has just like built this out and my ability to, um, you know, connect with the friends and the world that I have around. But I think there's so much more growth just even within the running world, which is kind of where we only are right now is we are sort of known as a running product. Um, but I have women who use this as cycling. I have women who use this um, for horseback riding, like for hiking and just for lifestyle as an alternative to carrying their massive purse with them. Um, if their leggings don't have pockets in them or something. So I think there's a big opportunity for growth uh, in new markets that we haven't touched yet with really marketing um, and with our messaging as much as what we have with running. I also think just even within the running community, like we went to, um, not this past year because there are no race expos, um, but in 2019, we did a couple of race expos. We were at Shamrock that Sally was at. And, um, you know, we actually were there and it made us realize that we aren't well known enough to actually be at expos because when you're a marathon runner, you're not looking to find something new the day before a marathon or a half marathon. And I wouldn't do that either. And, um, and so we actually decided that we needed to just do more um, paid marketing through Facebook, the F word, sorry. Um, paid marketing through social media and digital um, to get our name out more well-known and to do more press um, to get that sort of gravitas that we needed to be able to go do in-person events. Um, and so I just think there's a lot of room for growth. I mean, there are over a million women that run marathons and half marathons every year. Running is growing right now. Um, and I think that even for me being a two product business, we have really high profit margins. We have a high customer return rate. Um, I think we have a ton of room for growth. Go ahead, go ahead. Hi there. Um, I'm just wondering what has been kind of your biggest struggle or your obstacle to growth and how can a partnership with title nine help you overcome that? Um, I mean, I think our biggest obstacle is honestly been operational because I don't come from a merchandising or um, product development background. And so uh, professionalizing that purchasing power has been a struggle. Um, and, uh, you know, like I told this story yesterday to the um, when we were meeting with the product team that, you know, I want to have more manufacturers that are creating quality clips for me. Right now, I just have one and I feel like I'm sort of in a pricing bind if they tell me they have to raise my prices 15% um, because I can't can have them competing with anybody else. So I'm working right now to try to find other manufacturers that I can, you know, have better product distribution. And, um, but I, you know, but without that background, like I've really had to rely on like the manufacturer we use right now is from a friend who has a run, you know, from a friend who has a running company that she was willing to share her, um, her manufacturer, but like I had actually tried to get a new manufacturer in the East Coast and they ended up like producing a product sample, but when they went to production, they just couldn't do it. And it's unclear if they couldn't do it because of like the different machines that were needed. Um, because it's not just like, you know, creating a new shirt, there's, you know, it's a new thing that uh, they were trying to figure out how to do. And, um, and so, you know, I ended up luckily getting my money back from them, but, you know, it sort of like took down our production uh, ability to diversify a little bit. But I think that would be one of the main things. I think this connection and network of women owned businesses of helping production. Um, and uh, so that's one of the main things I think Title IX would really help me with. All right. Thank you, Christina. Great job.